So time to continue with our bit manipulation playlist. Ready for that? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is power set, or rather printing all the subsets. Now this particular problem has a recursive solution as well. I've discussed it already in the recursion videos. So in case you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. So what is the problem exactly stating? It's stating that you'll be given a nums array. And it'll have to print all the subsets. And if you're using bitwise operators, and that is what we basically call it as a power set technique. So you have to print all the subsets. Now for this particular number array, nums array, the first subset will be an empty subset which doesn't have anything. The second subset will have one. After that, you'll have two. After that, you'll have three. So these are the subsets with one element. And then you'll have subsets with two elements, which is one, two, then it's one, three, then it's two, three. And after that, you just have one subset with three elements, which is one comma two comma three. So if you count down the number of subsets, it's uh, rather one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in total, there are eight subsets and your task is to return all of them. How do you return it? So it is a list, it is a list, it is a list. So what you need to do is, you'll have to create a list and then include all the lists inside it. And this is what you will be returning. This is an empty one, then you can have one, then you can have two, then three, then one, two. So all the lists inside a list. Got it? How do we solve it? Now we know the recursive approach. We have already done it in the recursion videos. But how can we use the bitwise operators? It's very simple. First of all, we need to understand one thing that if n is 3, the number of subsets are 8. If n is 2, the number of subsets will be 4. If n is 1, the number of subsets will be 2. If n is 4, the number of subsets will be 16. You can take examples, you can do a dry run and you'll figure this out. So the number of subsets are nothing but 2 to the power n. Or rather, you can write it as 1 left shift of n. This is how you write it in bitwise. Right? 1 left shift of n is equivalent to saying 2 to the power n. Correct? That's very obvious because if n is 3, 2 to the power 3 is 8. So in bitwise, we know that there are 3, there are three numbers or 3. We can convert it into bitwise as three indexes, three bit indexes, okay? So I'll write zeroth bit index, first bit index, second bit index. And what I will do is, I'll just use simple Boolean logic and I'll be like zero, 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 and then one, 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 one. So what I did was if there are eight, I'll start with four zeros and four ones, okay? After that, I'll be like 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, okay, 2, 2, 2. After that, I'll be like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So basically, if there are 8, you start with 4, then you start, then you go to 2, then you go to 1. So basically, 4, 4, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, got it? If it would have been 16, it started with 8, 8, then 4, 4, 4, 4, then 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, then 1, 1. Got it? So this is how you'll start. Now what 0 signifies is do not take, not take. And 1 signifies take, okay? And if I have to write down the indexes, this is 0th index in the array. This is the first index in the array. This is the second index in the array, okay? So for the first time, it has 0, 0, 0. So on the 0th bit, it has 0. So you will not take the 0th index in the nums array. It is again 0, so you will not take. It is again 0, so you will not take. So eventually, you will have an empty subset. So this is how you'll get the first empty subset. Done. Let's get to the next one. So if I get to the next one, you have it as 1. So the 0th bit index is set as 1. So you will take 
the zeroth index in the array, which is one. Got it? Because this is the zeroth index, which is one. So you'll take it. Now this is not set. This is not set. So done. Let's go to the next. So if I go to the next, I have the first bit index set as one, which is this one. So you'll take it. Done. Let's go to the next. So if I go to the next, I have zeroth bit index and first bit index set as one. So I'll take this and this. So this will be one comma two. Again, the order doesn't matter as long as you're returning all the subsets. That is what matters. After this, you just have the second one set. So you'll just take the second index element, which is three. After this, you have the zeroth set. And the second set, which is this one and this one, so you will take one comma three. After this, you have the first and the second set, so you will take this and this, which makes it two comma three. Right at the end, you have everything set, so you will take one comma two comma three. So if you can do this, it actually works. And if I have to write down the numbers in decimal, this is actually zero, this is actually one, this is actually two. This is actually three. This is actually four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. Yeah. So basically, what you need to do is you need to iterate from zero till two to the power n, where n is the number of elements in the set. So zero till two to the power n minus one. This is what you need to iterate. And for every binary, you have to check the zeroth, the first, and the second. And depending on that, you'll create your list. And eventually, when the list is created, you store it in the list of list. So the order doesn't matter. And eventually, we have to return a list which is containing all the list, which are basically subsets. So once all the subsets are generated, you have to take the individual list and put it into the bigger list. And this is what you will be returning, right? So it's time to write down the pseudo code again. You'll find the C plus plus Java Python JavaScript code. Given below, so let's quickly try to write down the pseudo code. It's going to be very simple. What is your first task? The first task is if n is given as three, figure out the number of subsets. So maybe I can write it as the number of subsets will be one left shift of n. That's basically two to the power n. That's basically eight. And maybe declare a list answer, which is going to store all the lists, right? If you are if you're doing in C plus plus, it will be vector of vector int. If you're doing in Java, it will be list of list or array list of array list. You can figure that out. Now, what is the first step? The first step is I know the numbers will be going from zero to seven. Yeah, we'll run a for loop. So I'll start from. Maybe I can take the number to be zero, and I can go ahead and go till. Subsets minus one because if subsets is eight, I'll go till seven. Okay, fine. The first time the number will appear to be zero. What do I need to do? I need to check for zeroth, first, second, three bits, or rather zero, one, two. So if n is three, I'll go for zero, one, two. Okay, one more. So I'll be basically going from. Maybe I can take it as i equal to zero till n minus one. Very short. Sure. And at every step, I'll have to create this particular list. So maybe I can take a list which I need to create or the subset. Perfect. Now, how do I check? What do I need to check? If the zeroth bit is set, if the first bit is set, if the second bit is set, check if the ith bit is set or not. I've already done it. I've already done it. If your number is let's say num, you basically do num and one left shift of i. If this turns out to be a non-zero number, it means it is set. Otherwise, it is not set. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and say, okay, if my number is num and one left shift of i, if this is a non-zero number, this is set, which means this will be a part of me. So nums of I'll pick up that index number from the array. Done. And the for loop is completed. Once the for loop is completed, it means I have checked from zero till the last bit, which is the second bit for this particular example. 
So I'll go ahead and take the answer and I'll add this particular list. So this answer is basically storing all the list. So once this for loop is completed, I can go ahead and return this particular answer. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. If I ask you about the time complexity, what will be it? So can I say this will be taking 2 to the power n because I'm going from 0 to 8, like 8 times. So 2 to the power cube. So 2 to the power n, right? And this one is taking b go of n. So can I say that the overall time complexity will be n cross 2 to the power n in order to generate all the subsets? I can. I know this will not be taking any time. This check will not be taking any time. What about the space complexity? Can you analyze? I know one thing for sure. There will be 2 to the power n subsets. There will be 2 to the power n subsets. Can I actually analyze what is the size of each of them? I cannot say that each of them is n. Each of them is n. I cannot say it. So maybe I can say that the space complexity is near about 2 to the power n into n because it's not sure that each subset will be of size n and you can probably figure it out maybe if you try this is 0 size, this is 1 size, 1 size uh, this is 2 size, this is 1 size, 2, 2, 3 and if you sum it up that's 1 plus 1, 2, plus 2, 4, 5, uh, 7, 9, 12 comes out to be 12 Maybe you can figure out some formula, you can do it, but I'll not get into that. In an interview, you can say, near about, that will work. Got it? So you can also use the recursion method. Now that method has a similar time complexity, but has an extra bit of space complexity because you're using recursion and it involves stack space. Remember? So this will be it for this one. I hope you have understood everything. And if that is the case, Please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, please do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.